In this video, we'll take a conceptual look at the idea of classes and objects, which give us the ability to model more complex data types in our programs. It turns out you can define your own data types besides the ones that are built into our programming language. Remember, a data type communicates what we can do with a value in our program, its properties and its capabilities. So if you have a number, you know you can do arithmetic with it. So far, we've only used the built-in data types string, boolean, number, and arrays. Often, though, we'll need to model more complex ideas. For example, if we wanted to model the idea of a Twitter profile or a pizza order or a basketball player stats, we need some additional capabilities in order to do so. What we're going to see is that we can define what we call composite data types by combining some other types into a single composite type. So kind of like in chemistry, where you can make a compound out of atoms, we can take some of our atoms, which are our primitive types, and compose them together into a composite data type. A class, we'll see, is how we can define a composite data type in a value whose data type is composite is an object. So what are we looking at here? This is a Twitter profile where all of the specific fields are made placeholders, where we've got a placeholder for a name, a handle, we see that the image where someone's profile picture is whited out. You can imagine there's a banner picture in the background, the number of people following, so on and so forth. In order to understand composite data types and classes, we can think of the template of a Twitter profile as a class. A class isn't actually a visual template. We'll see what it looks like in just a moment. But it is a definition of what a composite data type is. And so if we think of this template as the definition of what makes up a Twitter profile, we can use an analogy here to compare a class versus an object. A Twitter profile template is to a specific profile, like a class is to an object. And so here we've got the idea of what a Twitter profile is made up of, but we know that there can be many different profiles which fit this template. So what are all of these individual profiles? We would call these objects. And an object has all of the fields that are defined by the class, but each object has its own unique values. Chancellor Fultz's Twitter profile has her handle, which is at Chancellor Fultz. It has a different bio than uh, one of our UTAs, Sarah Gancy, who has a, her own name and her own picture, so on and so forth. So how would we actually model one of these Twitter profiles in code? We're gonna talk about the exact syntax in the next video, but the big idea here is that we're gonna be able to bundle many related variables into a single data type. And this is what we call a composite data type. So if you look at the class Twitter profile down at the bottom, you can see that it looks like they're all variable declarations, but because we're declaring them inside of the body of a class, we don't have to use the let keyword to do so. We call these properties of the Twitter profile class, and we can see that they correspond logically with the fields that you would expect looking at the form of a Twitter profile. So when you edit your profile, you can see there's a place for your name, your handle, your bio, so on and so forth. And we can see that we can use properties of type string, boolean, and number. And later we'll see that you can use properties whose types are classes or arrays as well. The importance of a class is that it establishes the properties that each object is going to have. We'll explore this more fully, but the idea is because each of these Twitter profiles is of type Twitter profile, they're gonna have the exact same properties or the exact same bundled variables as each other.